Haley Saloma. I'm a costume designer, and I'm here to talk about how I was integrated into the character pipeline of Remedy Entertainment's control. Before I start, remember to turn off your noisemakers and remember to fill out the evaluation form after the session. Control is Jesse Faden's story. It takes place in the headquarters of the Federal Bureau of Control, where Jesse uncovers the answers she seeks as she grows into the role of the director. Remedy is known for narrative-driven cinematic single-player action games that have a strong lead character. This presentation is based on my work as a costume artist on Control, which will be released this year. Before Control, I had worked on costumes for live arts, such as dance, circus, and theater, and digital costumes in animation and VR. In 2016, I wanted to write my master's thesis about costumes in games, and asked Remedy if I could come work for them to see how they do things, and if I would be of any help in the character process. I ended up working on the costumes of Control for two years, and wrote the thesis about this collaboration. The main finding in the thesis was that the people who design characters' appearance for games and the people who design costumes for life arts have the same job. Both professions create characters from the inside of the story and concentrate on expressing the character's age, background, social status, and the time period, environment, and climate through appearance. Costume is often confused with fashion. Fashion designers design clothes for general public and concentrate on the aesthetics features of clothing. Costume design is character specific and concentrate on the narrative features of clothing. It includes not only what the character is wearing and why, but also how the garment is worn and how the character's previous actions, events in the story or passing time have affected the quality and condition of the clothing. Costume designers also define how the characters have their hair and if they have physical characteristics such as tattoos or scars. This job description also apply on realistic character design. Despite the form of the visual narrative, the character's appearance communicate information about the world where the narrative takes place. The main difference in designing the costumes for games or live arts is that the costume design is mostly connected to the physical human body. In live arts, the restrictions of costume design are connected to the reality and physical laws, while costuming games is restric restricted by the technology. The thesis and this presentation concentrate on games that are based on human characters and are either realistic or represent stylized realism since most of my work on control was about adding realism through the costumes. This talk refers to my experience in making games at Remedy as a costume artist, and the utilized methods are considered through the character pipeline of Remedy and apply primarily on the Remedy's character process. During this session, I'll talk about how learning the similarities and differences of the costume production between game and film industry helped me to integrate into the process, the character process. I will also introduce three examples of costume work on control. The first two examples are based on pipelines familiar in game industry, but I will go them through from costume perspective and present my contribution to the process. The first example we'll look into is the development of the protagonist. Jesse's costume was based on live garments. With the second example, I will talk about how the costume construction solutions were communicated further in the production and how I supported the character artist's work. And finally, I will present the live action pipeline, which is basically the pipeline of live arts. There is integrated live footage in Remedy Games, and during my time in the company, I did some traditional costume design by dressing up the actors for these live shoots. I will use Dr. Darling's shoots as an example for this one. 
These slides will be posted online later and you are welcome to look at details uh, at the website. But for now, I want to point out a couple of things from the following charts. When I started working at Remedy, I had no idea how to make games. My first challenge was to find out what is Remedy's character pipeline. By pipeline, I address the collection of methods of the different sections of the process and the professionals who are involved with the visualization of the characters. The sections are categorized on the left and on the right are the professionals responsible for those specific tasks. The second challenge was how can I be involved? I made this pipeline comparison to figure out the similarities and differences of the character pipeline of Remedy and costume pipeline in live arts, which I'm familiar with. These processes are, of either fields are not as linear and, and, and defined as it might appear in these charts, but I simplified them for the research sake. First of all, what I found out was that the pre-productions of these two are very alike. The pre-production start with analyzing the narrative, whether it is a script or a character bio. After the script analysis, there are the stages of research, reference material search, and reference or mood boards, all identical in both pipelines. This all leads to visualizing the character in a costume illustration or concept. The production phases, on the other hand, are very different. The production of a game character was all new for me and I had to figure out how to, con how to contribute to this part of the process. What was also new were the technical restrictions of character production that sets frames to what type of clothing I can design for the characters. Also, the iteration loops formed a major difference. During control, sometimes the costume passed through the production phase and after testing, ended up all the way back to my desk for a redesign, while in live arts, the iteration rotates mostly between rehearsals and costume adjustments. In the end, I was involved with the entire character pipeline of control. I worked as part of the character artist's team under the direction of the lead character artist, Antti Pormia. In the pre-production, I worked on the character analysis, research, reference boards, and costume-based character concepts. Some new methods were integrated into the pipeline, such as dress code and detail boards, but I'll talk about these later on. During production, I searched for both real and digital textile and clothing material for photo scan and reference purposes. Character photo suits was a method adapted from live arts. I will get back to that one too. I manufactured clothing in Manif Marvelous Designer and offered costume support for character artist and character technical artist when needed. And here is how I was involved. This is a recap of some of my tasks at, at Remedy. It's, a collect collection. it's collected from my video diary, one second per day, and it has peaks to each of the examples we will go through during the presentation.
Might she not? Before going through the examples, let's have a look at the game. In order to design the protagonist and the rest of the characters, we need to be familiar with the setting of the game and the environment the characters will be seen in. The story of Control takes place in the oldest house, which is the headquarters of the Federal Bureau of Control. The oldest house is located in New York and it's built in the brutalistic architectural style. August 4th, 1964. Bureau agents discover the oldest house investigating an altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. It's a place of power. From the outside, it looks like an ordinary building, a brutalist skyscraper. But inside, it breaks the laws of our reality. Unstable, mad, and shifting. There are rooms in the building where other dimensions leak in. We call these rooms thresholds. There is a connection between our minds and the unknown, often hostile forces intruding on our world. These forces gravitate toward everyday objects, a gun, a television, a house with the reputation of being haunted. So somehow, we affect these events. We're holding the key, but we don't have a clue on how to use it. We're dealing with dangerous, unknown forces here. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? We're on a mission to find answers to these questions. Die trying. This is Zachariah Trench, the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. As mentioned in the trailer, the environment is an ever shifting supernatural location that exists outside of the laws of reality. The FBC has created a combination of science and ritualism in order to stabilize some of the oldest house topography. The equipment of Bureau is old fashioned. The supernatural environment demands tested and confirmed equi equipment that is more stable than the modern ones. Changing the gear might risk the reached stabi stability of the unpre unpredictable environment. In addition to studying supernatural elements that they actively seek out, contain, study, and attempt to control within this interior, FPC also researches various forms of protection from supernatural phenomena to shield the employees. The people who work, work in this environment, the employees of FPC, are regular bureau staff such as office workers, maintenance, and security. I created the Bureau's dress code to frame the style of these NPCs in the game. I kept the style classic, timeless, and generic to contrast to the unpredictable supernatural environment. As the equipment of Bureau, also the office dress code is old fashioned and leans back to the 60s to 80s office wear that was based on straight pants and collared shirts and at some office jobs still is. Most of Control's costumes are based on these fundaments, except for maintenance and tactically demanding costumes. However, FPC employees always dress up appropriately and treat their clothes with respect. Here are a couple of NPC characters I made. Uh, even the laboratory work is, worker is based on a collared shirt and straight pants. You might notice uh, quality differences between these concepts. During the years in live arts, I always drew everything by hand, but when I started at Remedy, I had to learn how to use Photoshop. The lab guy is one of my earliest concepts. Then we get to the first example, developing the protagonist.
After I was familiar with the environment the characters will inhabit and created the dress code to define the base style of NPC's look, I created a reference board to explore Jesse's style. The main idea here was to communicate Jesse's externality to Bureau through style and materials. Jesse wears contemporary, relatable street clothes, and her materials are denim and jersey. She wears the only jeans in the building. In contrast, Bureau clothes are made of durable and high-quality materials, and their style is old-fashioned and well-fitted. Jesse's not into fashion. What matters for her more is the functionality of the clothing. When Jessie arrives Bureau, she rebels against the dress code. Whatever she is given to wear, she rolls up sleeves if possible or keeps items of her own outfit, such as her jersey shirt or shoes. Her growth into the role of the director is also expressed through her appearance. During the pre-production of Control, I made around 130 costume variations of Jessie's outfit. Jessie's character was developed alongside the narrative, and during the process of defining our protagonist, the style went from official style to street style, then a bit over the top to punk, uh, then to a soft casual look before Jessie's current style started forming up. Actually, the reference board of the previous slide was not the first, but probably the fifth of a kind, and here it applies to the last two rows of costume variations. When I found the style that, that the team agreed with, I created this costume board for Jessie's life concepts. Based on the board, I bought actual clothes for costume fitting. At this point, we knew that when Courtney Hope, who acts Jessie, comes over, we will dress her up as Jessie and have a photo shoot with her in character. The clothes I bought based on the board are used to build up life concepts to test Jessie's outfit combinations. I made around 30 of these. I narrowed the selection of 30 down to five outfit combinations that were tested at the photo shoot on Courtney. There's me with the photographer Mikko Riikonen and lead character artist Antti Bormio at the shoots looking through the live concept variations. During the same photo shoot where we tested the costumes, we took photos of Courtney in character. These in-character photos were further utilized in concept art. Based on the photo shoot's costume tests, I defined the final outfit on the left. Jessie went through some modifications due to visual and technical reasons after the final concept. Here on the right, right we have the final Jessie. When the concept was confirmed, I moved on to manufacturing Jessie's jacket, which was highly handcrafted. First, I dyed the leather by hand. Here are the samples. I was exploring the tones between green and blue. Then the jacket was made to Courtney Hope's measurements at a seamstress Anni Kontinen, according to the costume concept. After manufacturing, the jacket was distressed and molded with steam and shoe polish to make, it, uh, to make it appear more worn. After the manufacture and distressing, the jacket was photo scanned. Each pattern piece of the jacket was photographed to transfer the handcrafted details accurately to the digital version. Since originally I had planned to give Jessie a scarf, I had kept the jacket's design very simple. But after giving up the scarf, the jacket needed some post detailing, so I added a zipper. When the jacket was ready, we had another photo shoot with Courtney. This time it was for key art and motion reference material. There is Courtney doing the shield. We had these character photo shoots for every main character of Control. This photo is from Trench's photo shoots. Trench is played by James McCaffrey. I designed and had manufactured all the game's main costumes. The costume supports the actor's work by helping the actor to internalize the character. Utilizing an actor for their character exploration and recording it in photo shoots and live videos brought the character alive and helped us to define the co-created idea of the appearance and the personality of the character. 
Basing the character on live material gives it connections to reality. What we got from the photo shoots were the photo, motion, and character references of the actual character in the costume, which were further utilized by concept artists, character technical artists, and for the internal communication. The costumes produced for the shoots were later photo scanned. And here is how the jacket currently looks like in the game. Then we have the example number two, design communication in production. It's about how I communicated the costume information further to character artists. In this example, I will present one of Jesse's outfit variations. I started with a reference board again and explored the style and materials of the outfit. After iterations, this concept was confirmed by the team. I designed this outfit to emphasize the brutalistic architecture of the oldest house. I thought of it as the building in a costume form. After the concept, I proceeded into detail board for character artists. It is meant to give the character artists all the costume related information they need, such as material volumes, attachment details, and the outfit layers. Here's another detail board example and another one of Jesse's outfit options. The difference to the previous one is that the concept here is not by me, but by Ville Kinnunen. One of my tasks was to define concept artists' character concepts, since the construction of the costumes where they represented were not always exact. I translated the concept into seams or layers of clothing and defined the attachments, materials, and other details of the outfit by paint over and photo reference. I solved the questions of how to wear it and can the character move in it. The costumes needed to be realistic and make sense. Also, a narrative connection was created. The costume needed a function. After the detail boards, I created the costumes in Marvelous Designer. The program is perfect for design communication since it is based on actual clothes manufacturer that I'm familiar with. So to support character artists' work, I produce either live clothing for Photoscan or digital clothing in Marvelous Designer. Detail boards were made for the more complex costumes that were not manufactured in reality. All the actually manufactured costumes function as detail references themselves. During production, I sat at the character artist's room and had a rack of clothes next to my desk, so we could go through costume construction details with live clothing when necessary. I also prepared textures by photographing and tiling textile materials. And here is the final 3D model by Daniel Garcia. And then we have our last example, the pipeline of live action. I'm starting with this reference board again to emphasize that the starting point for each costume, whether digital or real, is always the same. Here is the exploration for Dr. Darling based on his character bio. Darling's character pipeline followed the costume production of live arts. I purposefully chose materials hard to render because we didn't have to care about the 3D model this time. This costume only appears in live footage. At first, I bought and put together the wardrobe of Dr. Darling based on the reference board. Then I photographed each of the outfit variations and defined how is he wearing them and what does it tell of the character and the situation. Then I made the script analysis and scene breakdown and decided which outfit he will be wearing in each scene and how is he wearing it. And then we had the shoots. On the left, Sam is directing Matthew Porretta, who plays Dr. Darling, and on the right, shots of how it looks in the game. And that was my last example. It's time to summarize. 
I have shown three ways of how costume designer has contributed to the game development of control, from developing a protagonist to helping the production, and finally, live action shoots. What comes to characters appearance, people who design characters for games are doing the same thing as costume designers, but digitally. In control, I got to do both. I used live arts costume design practices and digital methods to develop realistic characters and support game developers' work. Last year, I started lecturing about digital costume in various costume study programs in Finland, and Alta University has started integrating digital methods into the costume degree. In addition to preparing costume designers to work on the digital characters in film and animation, the aim is to provide future costume designers skills that allow them to offer costume support in game development and other digital productions. So, let's collaborate. Thank you. Instead of taking the questions here, I would like to continue the session in one of the wrap-up rooms. And I actually have a request for you. I'm looking to continue my research, and since I only have experience from one company and one project, I would love to hear examples from the industry, like other examples. Who are the costume responsible people of your company, and what is the role of costume in your character pipelines? I'm aware of the collaboration, collaborations between costume designers and game industry in LA Noir and GTA 5, but I would love to hear more. So if you would like to share any costume related information, please contact me through the email or join me to the wrap up room just across the hall, where I'll also answer the questions. Thank you.